Well, good morning. Welcome to Maranatha Baptist Church. Uh, go ahead and turn to Jonah chapter, cha chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1. And before we begin, let's see if there's any uh, prayer requests from our group here. Anybody? Yes, sister. Jacob Ramsey, yeah. Yeah, yes, sister. I appreciate that everyone's continuing to pray for my angel. I just appreciate everyone's prayers for my angel. Yeah, certainly. Yes, sister. Certainly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sister. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this time to uh, bring these requests before you, Lord, and to focus our hearts and attention on you. And uh, we know we need this time with you, Lord. We need this time to, to, to spend with you and share with you our hearts and share our hearts with each other, Lord. And I pray you just help us to uh, uplift each other and uplift each other's prayers and concerns to you, Lord, constantly. And I pray that you just help us to uh, help the request that you've, we've heard today, Lord, of, of family, uh, particular friends and family that are ill or struggling with, with some challenges, Lord, please give us, uh, give them the wisdom that they need, Lord, give them this, uh, give us the strength and the encouragement, and uh, Lord, we pray that you help us and uh, that your hand be upon them and, and heal them as you would have them be healed, Lord, and I pray that you just uh, help us uh, be a witness and a testimony through those trials and challenges that people face, Lord. Help us to um, show, show your grace and mercy through it all, Lord. Help us to show that difference that you've been in our lives, Lord. And I just pray help us to be a, a good testimony for you. And Lord, we thank you for this time together and thank you for this word. And just uh, help the words that you've uh, shown me, Lord, help it to be an encouragement to others as well. And Jesus, let me pray. Amen. All right, Jonah chapter 1. So we've been following through in the story of Jonah, uh, his, his, the, the, uh, where Jonah has been going. And so we saw in the third beginning of the series that Jonah, in verse 1 of chapter 1 of Jonah, says, Now the, Lord, the word of the Lord came into Jonah, the son of Amadi, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. So we've been seeing that Jonah rebelled. Uh, he decided he was going to go in the exact opposite direction. Um, and he, his intention was to flee from the presence of the Lord. Uh, now we know that he couldn't. There's no way he could flee from the presence of the Lord, but he definitely was going to try. And so he found some merchants heading to Tarshish um, in Spain and decided to sail, off, sail across the Mediterranean. And then as he did, uh, the Lord, this says in verse 4, it says, The Lord sent out a great wind in the, in, into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. So I will I'll give full disclosures. We were studying this last week. We studied you know, kind of Jonah's, um, where he was in this storm. And to this week, we're going to be studying more about the, uh, the mariners and the sailors in this storm and where they were. And so full disclosures, I told my dad in this series, uh, I should probably have read ahead because I taught a little bit of my lesson last week that I was going to teach this week and I didn't realize it. So you may get a little bit of repeat from last week if you weren't here. Um, so as we see in Jonah chapter 1 and verse, four, uh, in ver uh, verse 4 that there was a storm coming and in verse 5 we see the mariners were afraid and they cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it to them or lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down in the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So we saw that the mariners started out by, by, by praying to their gods, by getting rid of their wares, um, trying everything they could to, to save the ship. Uh, in verse 6, it says, So the shipmaster came unto him and said unto him, and remember this is the verse that we spent time in last week, 
thinking about what, you know, what does that mean as believers in the midst of a storm? Are we the ones down in the bottom of the ship asleep? Are we the ones as, as a church down asleep when the world around us is seeing turmoil? He says, so the shipmaster came and found him and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Again, think about those words, and are we that sleeper? And is the world crying unto us that we should be calling upon to God that, he, that they perish not? Verse 7, and they said, every one to his own fellow, come and let us cast lots, and we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lots fell upon Jonah. And they said unto him, tell us, we pray, for, those, uh, for whose cause this evil is upon us? Uh, who, what is thine occupation? Whence comest thou? Whence, uh, and what is thy country? Of what, art, what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, I, and I fear the Lord, the God of Israel, or the God of, sorry, the God of heaven, which hath made the heaven and the dry land. And there were the men, then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? Uh, for the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. And when they, had, they said unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast, forth, cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you, for I know that for my sake this tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was temp tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried out unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, for, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life. And lay not, a, lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took Jonah up and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. And the men feared and, exceed, and, and the feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. And now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So we see that this the, kind of looking at the end of the towards the end of this passage and seeing what 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 the result is. We see that in this uh, for this lesson today, we're going to be looking at this chastisement of Jonah brings revival. It says, "Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's sake, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee." See, Jonah was being chastised. The Lord was chastising Jonah. And they, knew, they, they came to a place where they realized who the Lord was. They realized His power. and his, 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 uh, It was ultimately his, his to control. So we see first... Oops, I'm sorry. I was clicking and it wasn't clicking. There we go. So we see first there was a sobered reverence. Then the man feared, then the man, in verses 16, we see the end of this, uh, kind of what we learned of the, the mariners. It said, then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Here we see, this is the first, of the, what did they do? They worshiped God. Here we see the, the, the mariners worshiping God. They made sacrifices and made vows unto him. They committed their lives unto him. Which is interesting. We looked at last week the contrast. What is Jonah's approach to when God called, called him? And when God directed him? When God chastised him? What did Jonah do? He continued to run. He continued to run. He, he, he was so, we looked at last week, he was in such a place that he was so given up to his own, um, his own will. He was willing to go fall asleep in the bottom of the ship in the middle of a storm. Like he just had no other cares. We see it in this path. And he gets to the point um, he says in verse 12, he says, And take me up and cast me forth into the sea. Jonah was so in a place of, of, of rebellion that he was willing to die. He was willing to commit suicide and let these men, and, that, and, and they'll see in a minute, we'll talk about that later on, about these men were going to have his blood upon them. And he was okay with that because he was in such a place of rebellion. Compare that to the, to the mariners. Where were the mariners? At the end of, by the end of this passage. They were saved. They were committing themselves to, Christ, to God. They said what? They, then they feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice. The contrast when we look back in verse 9 and see Jonah and they say, and he says, and he describes to them who he is. He says, I'm a Hebrew and I, what? Fear the Lord, God of heaven, which made the sea and the dry land. 
There's a difference in the fear that was there. Jonah, this, Jonah had a head knowledge of the fear, whereas these mariners had a heart knowledge of that fear. They understood who God was. Uh, there was a sobering reverence that this storm had created. But what led to that? Uh, it started with that conversation. He says in verse, uh, verse 10, what's it say? They were, then the men were exceedingly what? Afraid. Where were they afraid of? They realized the circumstance that they were in. He says, why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord. Because he had told them. He had told them that he had fled from the presence of the Lord. And they said, what shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. At this point, what did the mariners fear most? They feared the sea. They didn't fear God yet. They feared the sea. But they knew that what Jonah had done was going to cause them to die at sea. You see, the man, for, for many of us, when we, we face trials in our lives and challenges in our lives, we face the things around us. We face the trial. We face the, the, the uh, unknown, the, the concerns, whether it's job loss or health issues or those things that come around. We fear the storm that's around us um, and not the creator, as, as Jonah even described him, the one that made the, land, the, the sea and the dry land. We didn't, he didn't, they didn't fear him. We see in Luke chapter 23, it says what? Dost thou not fear? This is, the, this is the, uh, the, the thief sitting on either side of Christ. And the thief turns the other thief. And he says, dost thou not fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justify, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. You see, the thief understood the result of their sin. He understood. He said, why, he says, what, what, should, what should be the reaction of those that understand the results of their sin. What's he say to the other thief? Do thou, not f- do thou not fear, or do not thou fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation? The, th- the repentant thief understood his, p- his condition. He understood that he was a sinner, that he was receiving this, 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 this condemnation, this physical condemnation was a, was a representation of his spiritual condemnation. That they were gonna die on a cross next to Christ because of the, 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 the wrong that they had done. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. As believers, it's easy for us to kind of, uh, when, when our soul is, is uh, safe in eternity, it's sometimes easy for us to forget that danger that is out there for every other soul. For the souls that don't know Christ. He says, what, what, what should we fear? Should we fear those that should kill the body? No, we should rather be able to destroy both body, uh, both soul and body in hell. I was, we were uh, on the camping trip talking about, uh, Brother Carl was asking me about uh, one of our mission trips we took in 2014 to Kenya and talking to some of the, um, the believers there and some of the, uh, the church members there and they're, they're uh, and there, where they're at in that place in Kenya, Nakuru, they'll take their, their church actually um, has ministers in their church, and the, they're basically they've hired, they hire they will send folks in their church as missionaries into Burundi and into Rwanda. And if you recognize some of those names, Rwanda, you remember had a, a great genocide I mean, several years ago, and Kenya had great uh, political unrest. Well, these men are going in for six weeks at a time into these other countries to witness and be ministers, leaving their families behind. And then, and when you think, when I read this verse, I think of them. They don't the the, the stories that Brother Mickey has told the missionary that, from America that's there has told about going and being uh, sleeping and waking up, uh, go, arriving in, in after 24 hours of travel by boat and by land and arriving in this little village. And spending the night in this uh, in, in, in this hut, and then uh, listening, hearing uh, military um, practice being done outside the window, and he wakes up, and it's the rebel leader for that for that territory, um, who is not a very welcoming guy outside the window. But the idea of not fearing what what man can do unto you, but fearing what uh, those that is able to destroy both body and soul. The, 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 our, our missionaries kind of exemplify that as they go. They're going because they understand the value of souls, right? Whereas us, what is our call? What should we be doing? 
should be going because we understand the value of a soul. We understand the concern that the, the, we should fear what should happen to those souls that face hell. And so these men, they heard that conversation. They heard what, uh, they, 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 they were fearful first of their body, the, the loss of life, what would happen to them. And later on, we'll see that they feared for their souls. And we see that Jonah's conclusion was, how do we solve this? Jonah's conclusion was, throw me into the sea. Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So, the, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. Jonah's conclusion was one of, uh, of suicide, as we talked about, of, 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 sacrif of them sacrificing him. When we think of our lives, and we think of the things that we start out with really good intentions. When I mean, you think of Jonah, I mean, he was, he was in rebellion. He was trying to get away from God, but he assumed that these sailors could sail safely across the sea. He didn't intend that he was going to be thrown into the sea by the end of that. I mean, even think, think back before God called him to Nineveh. What did Jonah, Jonah was going about his life, being, doing whatever he did as a prophet, uh, doing, the, doing the work that he was doing. These sailors, when they set out to go to Tarshish, did they expect to be in this turmoil? They expect to be in a, a deadly, the deadly storm? No. When we think about our own lives and the things that we start out with, it, you know, you, people don't get married expecting to be divorced. Uh, I guess you know, in, in our culture today that, you know, there's prenuptials and things like that that people do, which kind of uh, is bizarre to me. But the idea to get married and not expect divorce or to have a child and expect them to end up homeless or, uh, you know, to people party and they don't expect to end up in an accident. People skip church and they don't expect to end up lonely and spiritually destitute. We do things that we think are good at the time, that, are, that are, are absolutely good. Marriage is a good thing. Children are a good thing. Friends are a good thing. Um, celebrate, or, you know, having leisure time is a, is a good thing. But if we do that and we allow sin in our lives when we do that, what happens? What happens as sin creeps in, as we start to rebel, as we start to turn away, as we start to do our thing because that's what we want to do? What happens to those consequences? We have consequences, right? We have consequences that we have to face. You see, there's results to sin. The soul sinneth, and it shall die, says Ezekiel. Galatians 6 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he, shall, he that soweth to his flesh shall of, his, uh, of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And we know in 1 John chapter 5, there is a sin unto death. The idea that is, yeah, the, 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 all, Jonah's got come to a place where he realized that there was nothing left for him to die. This was the only way that was going to save these sailors was to cast him in the sea so that he could die. You imagine the place of these sailors. How did the, how did the sailors feel in this? What did they say? Said never, uh, it says, and they said unto him, cast me forth, for I know that, uh, that oh, sorry, skip down to verse uh, 14, actually verse 13, what was their first reaction? It says, nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to land, but they could not, for the sea was wrought and tempestuous against them. When Jonah said, throw me into the sea, what was their reaction? They were going to try one last thing. Let's just try to row as hard as we can and try to get to land. In verse 14, it says, wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, we beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life. And lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. We see the men's reaction is that they, they understood the, the gravity of the decision that Jonah was asking them to make. We see that there was, through that sacrifice, there was some reconciliation. We know the end result. It says what? That the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. That was the end result. But that's not how they started out. If we were to read that verse, we would have thought these men had been um, in church all their lives, or they'd been you know, in the temple all their lives because they were sacrificing and making vows. But that's not where this started out. Where did it start out? Verse 5. Turn back. Verse 5, we see it says, And the mariners were what? Were afraid and cried every man unto who? His God. See, these, men, these were superstitious men. These were men that each, you know, in those days, polytheists. They believed in everyone had their own God. They, they cried, to, cried to this saint or that saint or this God or that God. 
If we think of the things in our own lives where we turn to, we turn to religion first. Well, maybe if I just go to church more, my life will get better. Maybe if I just do this, this, uh, this good deed, my life will get better. You see, their, their first action was to cry to their God. And then what did they do? It says, and cast forth what? The wares that were in the ship unto the sea to lighten it of them. We talked about this a bit last time. I said, if I would have known we were going to hit this mess or point, I wouldn't have spent as much time. But you think about it last time. We talked about this last time. What were the wares to these men? Their livelihood. What was, who was going to be impacted by them throwing the wares over? Their families, not just them, but everybody in the, depended on them uh, making money off of the, the, the shipping that they were doing. And so they, they made a decision first to, uh, to, 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 to turn to their religion. They, they turned to their, uh, their physical abilities. You know, you can, you know, maybe, if I can, uh, maybe if I sell this off or I do this or financial abilities, and maybe we, can, uh, maybe we can survive, maybe we can lighten the ship. And then we saw in verse 13, it says, Nevertheless, the men, what? rode hard to bring it to the land but it could not for the sea wrought it and it was tempestuous against them they, 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 they relied on their, their religion they relied on their resources and they, they relied on their own work their own selves uh, we see that the effort of man is when we, when we first turn Romans chapter 3 reminds us that uh, our salvation doesn't come by our works it doesn't come by the efforts that we do Romans 3 says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. He says, what, what, what happens if we are justified by the law? If we are just good people and we get to heaven? What, 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 what's the result? What's he to ask there in that first question? Who, who's responsible for my salvation if, I, if it's by works? Me. God, who gets the glory? I do. Then we know it's not of my own works, but of what? But of, but of faith. Uh, this is by faith without the deeds of the law. We know Ephesians chapter 2 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, someone has said that, you know, it's, why is it that we still sin after we're saved? Why do you think it is that we sin after we're, still, after we're saved? Because we couldn't get saved without, uh, without Christ. We need Christ constantly. We need Christ in our lives constantly. The idea is that uh, if, if we could do it ourselves, we wouldn't need Christ. He says, but what? For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And we see that uh, not just in the, sal in the means of salvation, but in the means of the Christian life. He says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our what? Sufficiency is of God. As, as believers, how are we sustained? How are we, su how are, how are we sufficient before him? Only by God. He says, what? Not, of our, not, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. I think we've said this before, that uh, the idea that it's, it's refreshing in some ways to know that through sin there is unity. Because nobody's better than anybody else. That's what he says there, that, uh, it is that we are only sufficient through God not to think anything of ourselves. You know, no matter what clothes or cars or houses I, I li have and drive and live in, it doesn't matter, right? Because what? I'm no different than anybody else. Those, those things in the world, those wares. I may work, be the hardest worker in the world, but that doesn't make me any better of a Christian than anybody else. It doesn't make me any, any, any more deserving of salvation. John chapter 15 says, I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. As a believer, as a, as a ministry, as a one who's working in the church and serving, you know, we, we have to be sustained by the vine, by, by Christ. Christ is the vine. He says, we are the branches. He that abideth in me, the same bringeth forth, what? Much fruit. If we want to be fruitful Christians, we want to bring forth the fruit to his honor, we have to rely on him, for he can do nothing without him. We see the elusiveness of mercy. This, uh, the, uh, the mercy that, that was available. We know that mercy is available to these sailors, right? Mercy was available. Who was God sending 
Jonah to, to provide mercy to, to Nineveh. Was Nineveh divert, deserving of God's mercy? Like, let's go back to the first lesson we talked about. Was Nineveh deserving of God's mercy? Had they done anything? Were they God's people at all? No. Nineveh was the, the, what you would consider the exact opposite of that. They had done everything they could to antagonize God's people. They had done, they had done uh, heinous and torturous things. And here God was sending Jonah to go to Nineveh to show him mercy. How much, and we think of these sailors, were they deserving of God's mercy? No. There was nothing that they had done to deserve God's mercy. The mercy came because God offered it to them, because God offered it to the Ninevites. He says, uh, Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's sake, and lay not upon us innocent blood. For what? For thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. God's mercy comes uh, because he has created that opportunity. He has sent his son to die for us. You know, we can seek God's mercy on our own, our own efforts, right? We can try to say, God, try to appeal to God and say, God, give, us, give me your mercy. Uh, if I'll do that, we ever make a deal with God for God's mercy in your life? You ever try to make a deal and say, God, if I, I'll, I'll go to church every Sunday if you just take care of this. I'll go to church every Sunday if you just, or I'll, 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 I'll give to the poor every week if you do this. Can we earn God's mercy? No, there's only one way, right? It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. God's mercy has boundaries. God's mercy has, has, uh, has, uh, has you know, we talk about the straight is the way, or wide is the gate, and, and, and uh, narrow, narrow is the way that leadeth to salvation, or wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction, and narrow is the gate that uh, way is the leadeth to salvation. Uh, Isaiah chapter 55, Seek ye while the Lord may be found. Call upon me while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon us and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. The idea of God says, what is required for his mercy? What's he say? What's required? Repentance. Repentance is required for mercy. He says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. See, God's mercy is always available. God doesn't hold his mercy back. His mercy is always available. It's whether we are going as Jonah was in the opposite direction from his mercy or not. All Jonah had to do was turn around and say, God, I'm ready. Take me back. Send me back. Let me go to Nineveh. And that storm would have ceased. He didn't have to be cast into the sea for God to, to, to show his mercy. Uh, but Jonah took that as far as he could, and that was a demonstration to these, these sailors of God's mercy. We see that there was surrendered resolve. We saw that these men vowed vows, and we were exceedingly afraid that they, had, at the end of this, they were surrendered to God. Verse, uh, we, we know that they, what had happened to get them there? What did they do? It says, wherefore, they cry, they, after they cried unto the Lord, in verse 15, it says, so they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. It was after the sea had ceased that these men had fe shared that they had feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord. But, Jonah, but the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And so here we see that these men have been, uh, got to a place where they had to make a decision. What did they decide? They decided to throw Jonah overboard. This is a serious decision that they had to make. And whoso sheddeth uh, man's blood uh, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God, uh, image of God made he man. We know that that decision uh, to, to, to make that call, to throw him overboard, was not an easy decision for them. Uh, that we see in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, when thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools, pay which he hath vowed. Uh, better it is that thou shouldest not vow than thou shouldest vow and not pay. See, Jonah had made a, made a, or had said, if they had thrown him overboard, that the sea would stop. And that was a serious commitment for them to do that. They followed Jonah's lead, and that resulted in a supernatural miracle. That was an act of faith, if you want to take it as far as what these sailors did. 
They trusted that that sea was going to stop if they threw him overboard. What was the result of them throwing him overboard? There's two results. What happened? The sea stopped. And then what happened? In verse 17. Now the Lord prepared what? A great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Had the sailors seen the fish? Did they know that God had already taken care of stuff? No. But they knew that they had to make a decision. That, that was a serious decision they had to make. And, but there was a supernatural miracle awaiting. And what's, what we talked about in our series when we started this, Jonah, or the Lord does what? We see the Lord, Lord this is one of those prepareds. The Lord prepared, sent a wind. The Lord prepared a great fish. He prepared a gourd. He prepared a worm. But they, we saw this is one of those miracles in this story, or in this, this uh, series that happens. He says, and now the Lord prepared a great fish. There was a supernatural miracle. Uh, we see that uh, when God provides, he provides for us uh, uh, completely. He provides for us fully. He provides with what we need. It says, uh, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, or forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. These sailors had seen, uh, had, had been at the, uh, had, had, see, had been facing death. The, these sailors had given up everything just to try to survive. They've, they, they'd gone to the end of their rope. He says they're what? And they finally relied upon God to, do, to, to save them. He says, or to, uh, the idea of not knowing that the goodness of God would lead thee to repentance. At the end of this, this, uh, this passage, at the end of this chapter, where were these men? You imagine where they were at first. They were on their knees to their gods. They were... They were throwing things over, running about the ship. Then they were rowing, trying to row themselves ashore. And at the end, where were they? Sacrificing. Bowing before God, making sacrifices because of, the, the, uh, the situa or because of what God had done in the, uh, to protect them and save them. So we think about the sailors here. We, we've looked at Jonah. We looked at Jonah's reaction. You know, he was asleep in the ship and the sailors saw... Uh, uh, miraculous salvation. Their salvation came because they trusted in God ultimately. They learned who God was through the tough way. I mean, we think of where, where people get saved. People get saved in some of the toughest situations in hospitals, at, fu at funerals, and in the war zones. They get saved in, in those places where, they're, where God has brought them to, their, to the, breaking, the breaking point, to where the God has, has shown them their reality. And we think of for, for ourselves, are we out there being, or being that opportunity? Are we pointing people to Christ or are we like Jonah? We've given up. Yeah, are we out there pointing people to Christ and saying, you know, there, there's a way. Let's, imagine what would happen if Jonah would have said, instead of throwing him, throw me overboard and God will be happy. If he said, let's bow in repentance and offer sacrifice to God for forgiveness. What if Jonah led those mariners in, in forgiveness and showing in the example of forgiveness? Uh, I don't want to imagine what God would do, but in that case, I wonder what God would do if God would have, would have, would have calmed the sea because they would have seen Jonah's repentant heart. Where did Jonah finally repent? Where did it take him to go to finally repent? The bottom of the sea. It took him, to, that whale had to take him to, into the ocean, or he had to go into the ocean, into the, into the fish, to be able to repent. We see him repent there. Could you imagine if Jonah had opportunity to repent all along the way? When he first got on the ship, when the storm came, but he, he waited until he was in the bottom of the fish. We think as believers, you know, even though, and I think somebody said this in one of the first lessons, even though Jonah was a disobedient believer, what did God do? God used him. God used his, his example to bring repentance to those mariners. I told you it's a little bit of a short lesson, so I'm actually done about 20 minutes early. So any questions or thoughts? We've got time to think through this one. Any insights? Yes, Brother Tim. I wondered why didn't Jonah just jump? Why didn't he jump until they did that? Yeah, I wonder if it's, uh, yeah, we could make a, make a lot of assumptions about Jonah and his place. Um, his, 
Jonah's a man, I would think, as, we, as you study Jonah, that I've seen is he's a man defined by pride. I mean, that was his own pride and his own, uh, I'm not going to Nineveh. Those are evil people. Why would I go to Nineveh and, and see their repentance? You know, that Jonah was a man that was so overcome by pride. I, that was that would be my um, Johnology, if you were throwing that in there, for why Jonah wouldn't, wouldn't force them to do that, because he was so in the depths of his own pride that I, I'm not going to do that. But they can do it for me. I'm not going to do it. It's interesting, though. Any others? Other thoughts? Think about through that. If, if he's on the boat. Yeah, it's interesting that they you don't hear the other gods mentioned anymore after that. Yeah, they they realize there is one God that they need to worship. I think that's also why the scripture says. And there they made vows. It wasn't that they just made a sacrifice to a god. Like he said, that as one of the other gods, they, they were all in at that point. Sister? It's just another perfect example of the contrast of the will of God and the will of man and the consequences of it. I mean, God had a, a purpose for Jonah, and God was going to get what he wanted. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I was telling my dad, I meant to include this picture in here, but it didn't fit quite with the, the, the author's lesson. But uh, we were, when we were in the mountains, there's, uh, there's a creek that runs through the valley here and it runs really close to one of the mountains. You can actually see in the, creek, uh, in the mountain how the creek has carved away over years that mountain and it almost moves in the way of the creek. And I told my dad, I said, you think about that, uh, you know, the idea that as strong as a mountain is, you know, you don't see mountains just like, you know, getting up and, you know, like a sand dune or something that moves over time. A mountain is there. But here that water continued to work, continued to work, and it got its way. You know, we think of the idea of God's will in our life. It will continue to work, and it continues to work until it gets its way. Um, You know, giant rocks, which, you know, I can't lift in this water somehow, you know, that I can easily pick up, continues to work and work and move its way. You think of that's God's will in our life. Jonah had, you know, Jonah thought he was going to be, you know, I'm not being moved. I'm, I'm going to get away from God's presence. But God continued to work and work. So. Any other thoughts? Sorry. Oh, yes. Maybe this is just my way of thinking, but um, okay. uh, Jonah didn't have to be moved. He didn't yeah, you think of our our tendency to repent based on the consequences, not the, not the reality. Yeah, I think of my own kids, when they get in trouble, they're more so concerned sometimes about the, that they got caught, you know, what's going to happen. They don't want to go on restriction. They want to lose this or lose that because they did something wrong, not because they did something wrong. And I think this is where Jonah was. He didn't want to, you know, you think of our own lives. We, we don't like to do, you know, repent because of what we did wrong. We'll, we'll repent because we don't want to see something happen. Any others? Good discussion. Yes, sister. Yeah, we spent, I think we mentioned this verse last week in Romans. Um, we're talking about, actually, it's in the passage around reaping and sowing. He talks that our, no man lives unto himself, and no man dies unto himself. And the idea that our sin, there's no um, victimless sin. You know, even if we think, oh, it's just me, it's, not, it's only going to impact me, it impacts those around us. I mean, this is what was happening to these mariners. They weren't, you know, by all accounts, they, you know, they, they were, you know, pagans and worshiping other, other gods, but, you know, they were, they were not the ones being chastised in this situation. Um, that, but it, it was risking their lives and, and, and their families you know, as well, and impacting them, but that was because of Jonah's, Jonah's sin. Any others? Yeah. yeah. You read the first five where every mariner called for himself. Yeah. So that's just something I was thinking about. Yeah, and as a, I, I keep saying it out of habit because we often hear uh, in verse 9 where he says, I fear the Lord, the God of, uh, out of habit. In other passages it says the God of Israel. Um, and so out of habit we say that, but he doesn't say that. What does he say to him? It's the God of what? 
God of heaven, right? He talks about it's not, it wasn't a, um, it wasn't a national God. He create, he shares that God is a God is the God of everything. He's the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Um, you know that, that he defines him as as more than just. I mean, he defines himself as a Hebrew, but he says, "I fear the God that's more than just the Hebrew God." He's like, "I fear God, you know, the one that made it all." Yeah, and they had their own. I'm sure they had their own God based on wherever they were were from or whatever they had they believed in or trusted in. Yeah, sister. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they had this. Some of that, it's it's stunning to me just thinking about some of these things that you in our lives we think, well, God, just tell me what to do. Yeah. Yeah, be careful what you ask God. Because when he gives it to you, you may not be ready to ready to do what he asks you to do. Uh, I would almost if we could, if you could add a verse one uh, zero or chapter zero, you wonder what Jonah where he was at before this. You know, did he ask God, God, what do you want me to do today? And he's like, go to Nineveh. <laughs> I don't. I didn't ask for that, uh, but you asked me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any others? Yes, sister. talking this weekend about um, you know, the challenge of dementia and Alzheimer's and those you know, mental challenges that come on with age and the ability of losing that relationship with your family members. Your family members come and visit you, but you don't know who they are. And that's, that's kind of what I imagine is that earthly experience when we're separated. We have that something that's keeping us from, under, from being with God and having that presence. Um, it's frustrating. It's, 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 uh, it's upsetting. Yeah, David shared that when he was in, uh, I think it's Psalm 41, when he was in the cave. Yeah, and he felt he was surrounded by all his mighty men in the cave, hidden, and he said uh, you know, that he, he felt alone. Yeah, he's like, where are you, God? Because uh, here I am, surrounded by all these people, but yet I still feel alone. All right, well, thank you for the discussion. Uh, it was good, good, good talk this morning. Um, so next week we'll be looking... I'm sure we'll be talking about the great fish, and my dad will be um, covering that. So uh, get your theories ready. I know this is the fun part of the, the Jonah story of how did he survive. And, uh, I mentioned that if you want to see a recent, um, uh, if you saw the story of the, humpback, the diver and the humpback whale up in uh, New England that picked up a diver and spit him out. Um, he wasn't in there three days, but a uh, very interesting story, comparison. All right, let's close in a word of prayer. Oh, sorry, sister. Yeah, and the last thing I had, I think it's interesting that they didn't start rowing to the land until the end. They thought they could make it. They thought they could make it to their destination until they got towards the end and they realized, no, let's just go wherever we can go. Um, and that, that destination, that land that they made it to, if you want to call it that, that safe harbor was Christ, or was God. You know, they finally found him. And it, it was when they gave up rowing when they found him. All right, let's close in a word of prayer. Be dismissed. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for uh, this opportunity to open up your word and just uh, be reminded of your mercy and how that you are uh, ready to share your love and mercy with us and that fellowship with us, Lord, and just, uh, just how you're waiting on our hearts to be focused on you, just waiting on us to uh, accept you and repent of our sins, Lord. And I pray you just help us that we might be an encouragement to each other as we go through these storms that uh, we might um, uplift each other in prayer and that we might face uh, these storms together, Lord, and that we might be um, 
be that example, be that witness. As Jonah was that, and in his own way, was a witness to these uh, mariners that pointed him, to, pointed them to you, Lord. Help us to be a witness, um, witness of you, Lord. Help us to show uh, you as God of heaven and that made land and sea. Help us to be that testimony and witness in everything we do, Lord. And pray, just help us uh, in the services today. Help us our hearts to be open and ready for any word that you have for us. Uh, help us to be um, examining our lives, Lord, and being uh, lifting each other up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.